Prynhawn da, good afternoon. It's the 5th of November, Guy Fawkes night. Hope you all have had a great weekend so far. Been a bit busy, I have watched some rugby uh, over the weekend. But uh, I've got a busy hour or so work to be done here in the brewery. On this side, we have a American Pale Ale to empty and a sweet stout on this side but before that we've got some cleaning to do i have got to clean a couple of these kegs um whilst i'm cleaning these guys i will be replacing the new yellow o-ring uh let me just put these guys got a pink one on here most of them are black by replacing that to yellow apparently um these can uh, let oxygen in or gas out whichever way you want to look at it um i don't think i've had a problem to be honest with you but better be safe than sorry i think i paid a quid a piece or something like that from um alibaba or whatever i get my stuff from i can't remember really what they're called so yeah i've got to clean these kegs a couple of them um so i said so i've got the American Pale Ale here. Now, I did put the American Pale Ale. Uh, it's the first time I've ever done this myself on um, a yeast cake. I'd never tried it before, and um, it's always dubious. I don't know why, but uh, I was really pleasantly surprised. I'd say within about twenty minutes of putting the wort in, that airlock was bubbling like mad. So it, it, it it's an instant hit. Whereas, you know, if you put the yeast, the dry yeast or what have you, it usually takes about 24 hours to kick in. So I'm really presently surprised um, with that one. So um, I've got the California Ale Yeast in that and I've got the London Ale Yeast or the London 3 Ale Yeast here. So I need to capture some of them because I have started to do a, um, a collection of yeast and i usually just get one of these i've got one of these kilner jars fill one of them and that gives me about five vials let me just show you what i mean so i've got a little freezer here so these are the vials that i'm using getting all of them frozen in there so I've got some uh, Nova Lager in there. Oh, oh there's a, bo a bag full there. I usually get about five vials of each from whatever I put into that pot. Let me just put this back. So I will be honest, um, after, I've not tried to regenerate it as such um, as yet. Um, I've got the flask. I've got the magnetic stirrer there ready to go um, but I just want to capture these two first before I think I've got a lot of what I need in that bag now so I'm going to try uh, the next beer that I'm going to be making I will um, no I lie the next beer is going to be a Hefeweizen so I've ordered yeast for that um, and, and that's going to be an interesting um, uh, vlog because I've been reading up and I've uh, seen um, a recipe uh, and he's got a very different way of the the mashing in and and also I said I'm not going to go into it now I'll make a vlog on that one it's quite an interesting one it's a bit more technical than just getting it up to 65 degrees and blah blah, blah. there's a lot of, um, uh, of different things that I'll be doing on that one so um, I haven't been recording you all know how I brew my beer now so but that one's going to be quite interesting so I'll pop that on um, I think I'm due the delivery of everything tomorrow should have a day off this week sometime Wednesday Thursday I think so we'll give that a go hopefully yeah so uh, I've also got the yeast nutrient just this minute arrived so yeah um, yeah so I've got that let's um, just run through the American pale ale and the stout so the stout itself um i had some crystal 23 liter batches obviously crystal malt 500 grams um 250 grams of rice hulls 
black malt 150 grams, chocolate malt 390 grams, crystal light 255 grams, roasted barley 350 grams, medium crystal 90 grams and the um, golden promise at four and a half kilograms and a kilo of uh, wheat malt. So I'm still, I've got one sack of five kilos of the golden promise left. So I'm going through that um, and uh, it's been, I've been pleasantly surprised with all the beers that I've done so far. They've they've come out quite well. Um, they are most of them are still conditioning in there. We'll talk about a beer that I've actually just taken out last night, and it's on the bar. We'll go and have a sip of that. That's within funny. It's twenty nine days today, so it's a month, isn't it? So yeah. So that is the stout, the hazy pale I've got here. Let me just get this up so right kilogram of malted oats 4.5 kilograms of the golden promise um, and that was the uh, base malts for them the hops in this um, cascade and centennial and chinook uh, with some talus as well and that was on the yeast cake as i said so yeah really um been a couple of busy um, weeks for me brewing getting things conditioned um and at that point now when i'm i can start drinking the beer that's been in the cold room and uh things every every other beer that i do now will be catching up so yeah really happy with that so yes i'm gonna crack on guys i've got my hot water here i'll get the bucket blaster on i have kind of um jet washed inside the kegs just to get the crud out um from there and the old um hop matter that's clings around the side and bottom obviously so yeah we'll crack on get that going and um get this beer into the kegs into the cold room and then uh, we'll pop over and have a sip of i'll tell you later i'm just uh, not sure if um you've all seen this uh, a lot of you might have uh, the bucket blaster or something similar so it's just like um, a pond pump basically with a T on the end of it there water comes gushing out of that one for the beer line one for the gas line so it also blows um, all the water and the cleaning products into that so uh, I'll just pop it on and uh, Bring you back on. Just keep that on for about five minutes. I'll change um, the cleaning solution to Kemsan after I've cleaned it all out with this. And it should be good to go. Just cleaned the fermenters, putting the new seals on. It's as simple as that, really, guys. So It's one done. The two. Yeah, both of them on. Everything's clean. These are the hoses that I use to fill the kegs from the fermenters themselves. And these kegs will be quite warm after the hot rinse. So I usually go by the condensation going on the, uh, the side of the corny kegs. Hi right, guys, I'm just gonna pop these on and I'll bring you back on. And there we are guys. Lines are open, 
you can see the APA going into that I lift this so the air can come out and the same one for the sweet stout and um, what I will say about the sweet stout let me just I did add some stuff um, into the fermenter three days ago so five tonka beans uh, were immersed let me see in a smaller jar I'm not sure if it's here like this so had some vodka and five tonka beans and um, the tonka beans I had like um, a brownie colour by the end so emptied the solution into the fermenter I also added about 60 grams of vanilla uh, paste and what else did I put in just trying to think what else was put in there I think that might have been it tonka beans vanilla paste let me just confirm that on my little app here yeah I can't don't think I can remember um, anything else in it just make sure uh, vanilla oh yes yeah, sorry coffee um, I put just under a litre of coffee in it as well so it's been in that for about um, four days but this will condition now for a month obviously so yeah I'll get these done guys and uh, be back with you look like I've been working on it rolled up my sleeves and everything <laughs> right okay be back in two seconds lads so whilst these are still flowing not sure if you can see it here but I'm about here with the condensation so I know I'm up to here so I've got plenty of time to go so whilst I'm waiting for that in the bucket here with some Kemsan got a hose a couple of the jars and uh, this measuring jug just give them a good clean and I'll capture the yeast for both whilst I'm waiting for these guys to fill up so let me just get that hose out put the hose on there Let's see if I can get out there guys there we go might have to set you up here guys but what I'll do is basically easy to show on this one so the hose is on here and then I'll use this lever press the lever down and the yeast will pop out of there capture that put it in the jars put the jars back into the uh, cold room here and let it do its separation the yeast will just fall down fall to the bottom of the container and then I can just I use a big syringe actually um, here we go I use one of these syringes here just to pull out the yeast and put it into the uh, the vials I showed you earlier on um, but that let me just turn you around guys but that will be done in two or three days time when I've got a few minutes it doesn't take that long to be fair so what I do is um, that the vial is 50 mil so I'll put 34 mil of the yeast in there and then 50% extra so I'll take it up to 50 mil about 17 mil of um, glycerine let me just get that for you uh, vegetable glycerine there so I pop about 17 mil of that in so it makes it 51 mil doesn't it treble 17 for you dark boys <laughs> yeah so uh, that's what I do and then I freeze them and hopefully they'll come out um, I've, I've seen a few videos that's how everybody else has been doing it that I've seen um, there are other ways obviously doing slants and what have you um, but yeah this is the way I'm going to go forward with um, but what, I, what they do say is obviously don't stress the yeast don't try to make um, a high ABV with the yeast that's been um, working on a 4% beer or a 5% beer you'll never you know you'll have to um, work pretty hard and it would stress the yeast really if you wanted to do something like 10% ABV um, some sort of uh, porter or such yeah so that's uh, what I'll be doing uh, next I'll uh, 
keep a steady eye on both of these they're about a third filled up so far it takes about 25 minutes probably gravity wise and uh, if I can get a bottle or two I'll grab a bottle or two as well right guys I'm gonna crack on I'll see you in a bit let's have a taste of the stout I've just finished kicking I'll pour myself a bit two ticks Here it is guys, really is dark. I can smell the Tonka beans. I didn't know what they smelled like before obviously until I got some. Yeah, and it's not too pungent. I've um, read a lot, lots of um, different recipes and uh, people's taste notes. You've got to be very careful with the Tonka beans, how much you uh, put in. Apparently they're banned in America and places like that, um, but if you put too much in, they can be poisonous. But uh, the amount I put in was absolutely nothing really. Coffee notes definitely in that. The Tonka beans. I think there's a hint of vanilla in there as well. Although Tonka beans do give vanilla. Um, I read that there's apricot stone fruit type stuff coming out of it as well. Right, let's dive in guys. I'm only joking. Um, that is absolutely lovely. That is going to be a beautiful, gorgeous stout. That is lovely. So smooth. Now that's straight out of the fermenter. So there's no, you know, there's there's no conditioning gone on there. So so smooth oh, lovely ooh I can't wait till that's ready to drink wow right let's have a look at the American Pale Ale see what that gives me wash this out I haven't got much left <laughs> that's as much as I can get from the fermenter so I've had a, uh, the American Pale Ale right let's have a oh, like florally some citrus notes in there definitely right let's dive in guys I like that as well I like it a lot just a slight bitterness and um, an extra punch right in the back end with the bitterness which is what I like Oof, getting all warm inside love it brilliant very happy with that guys I'm very happy with that right let's see if I can just set you up somewhere so uh, see how we can grab the yeast out just bear with me guys This is the Yolundun Ale 3. Pop that into the jar. And let it settle. Drop done. So there we have it guys, sweet stouts there on 10 PSI, uh, I've got another um, citrus uh, American pale ale there, that's the one today that I just kegged, 
and down here we have uh, another west coast so and the east I've already got some in the back there as you can see and these are the new ones happy days let's close that door and leave them so four kegs full of beer ready for Christmas time probably right let's get to the bar and have that drink well deserved I think right two ticks well here's mine guys and there's the real McCoy let's uh, pour that in put it down for two ticks There they are, side by side. Mine's a bit more golden, I think. They're very similar, very similar. Right, let me spin you around. Give mine a go. Look at that. Quick, straight away, see if it's uh, any different. Mine's, this one's much smoother, but a bit more bitter on the back end. This is more bitter during the beer, uh, the drink, sorry. But great drinks nonetheless, very similar, very happy with that. Thanks for watching guys, hit the subscribe button, see you very soon. Yeah,